like this. Okay? That's better. Okay. This is the title of my talk. And even you can ask questions <laughs> to the title. <laughs> what means what? So I can tell you just a few words. So I will be speaking about isolated particles, quantum, quantum particles, interacting particles, finite number of particles. It could be Bose particles, could be Fermi particles. It is written here, Bose results are the same. You already checked this is for Fermi particles as well. And <coughs> the question is, what's going on when we include interaction and start with some initial packet and how this packet spreads how energy spreads uh, among other particles, okay? For example, it could be nuclear. For example, you have nuclear and neutron comes, excite this. So the question is how this excitation spreads. And so that recently it was uh, many, there are many papers where they discuss this process. They call this process of scrambling. Why? Because in this dynamics, so initial packet spreads, and so that occupies many, many unperturbed states, and so one can speak about ergodicity, one can speak about, but I prefer to speak about thermalization, because thermalization is the main, for me, is the main, I would say, uh, consequence of thermalization, of ergodicity. And <coughs> I planned just, uh, uh, to speak and to, uh, to discuss four points. One point is just exactly how Bose-Einstein or Fermi-Dirac, but I will speak Bose-Einstein, Fermi-Dirac is the same, but we have different results. So uh, how Bose-Einstein distribution appears on the level of single many-body states? We have excited state which is high level excitation state. And the question is, if I take one state, this only one state without averaging, can I speak about a distribution, by the Einstein distribution? The answer is yes. The question is when, and I can show you when. Okay. So this is first. So then <coughs> I will speaking about how this, uh, uh, how evolution of wave packets uh, starts to spread, how evolution happens and occurs in many body states, many body representation. Again, what I saw, I excite initially one many body states, include interaction between particles, and see how it spreads. The question is about evolution of wave packets in many dimensional Gilbert space, or if you like, Fox space, they are related somehow. So this is second question. The third question is, <coughs> <coughs> I would like to also to ask question. Uh, I start with this initial packet, just one uh, many body state, yes. So of course it's not any Bose-Einstein distribution, okay. But in the evolution, when we have scrambling, when we have thermalization, after the thermalization, I can expect what? I can expect appearance of the Einstein distribution. And so this is very interesting, even funny a question, because people speak about uh, scrambling, and they say that all information just disappear in time, like in black holes they discuss. So uh, the information, loss of information. Yes, this is true. On the other hand, what I'm saying, one new type of correlations appears. What appears? But the Einstein distribution appears. So in time, we have not before, but after we have time. So I would like to speak about that. And finally, <coughs> sorry. <coughs> finally, I, <coughs> <coughs> I would like to discuss quantum classical correspondence, but I decided to do this not finally, but starts from this. From why? To relate somehow with previous talk and to speak about quantum chaos and quantum classical correspondence for one body chaos. Why? Uh, because one body chaos, quantum chaos, is well-developed theory. So well-developed, so many, 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 many results are 
uh, obtained and almost everything is clear. But if we speak about many body curves, so this uh, theory still doesn't exist. So it should be created, so there are many uh, different, I would say, approaches, different questions, different results. By the way, you ask questions. Interrupt me at any time. It will help me just to arrange. <coughs> <coughs> so, therefore, let's start first with one body curves. And uh, for one body case, uh, the two models were started historically very well from uh, 77, 79, 80, there are papers, and one model is uh, Billiard, another model is Kickrotter. And uh, these paradigmatic models uh, manifest generic properties of quantum curves, one body curves. So what is uh, uh, a uh, kick rotor or uh, a kick, kick rotor? This is quantum version of classical map. And classical map we already discussed yesterday a little bit. Okay. So what is here? We have, we have for example, we have, oh, sorry, we have, uh, we have this Hamiltonian without this time dependency, just pendulum. So, what is this time dependence? Time dependence means that uh, the gravitation force appears as a kick, uh, kicks periodically in time. So, just kicks this. So, even one can do this experimentally, just on the table. So, you have just this pendulum, and then you make a kick, strong kick. So, and uh, I would say that it is experimentally, this model, not model, but <laughs> just physics, uh, reduced to this model was started in uh, atomic physics, optical traps, so they put uh, boson particles, so they uh, have uh, in interaction due to uh, uh, optical waves, and so they can arrange this also experimentally, and much was obtained in correspondence with analytical prediction. So, so this is what? Which experiment? This experiment due to, the, due to what is this guy? I can tell you. Huh? Yes, yeah. So what? Okay, I'm not going to speak about experimental, uh, I would say, uh, results. But I know this, and you know quite well also, you could, uh, many, many properties have been found and confirmed uh, experimentally, like uh, you study, you have many papers also about uh, resonances, quantum resonance, so on. You know this. Is. So I'm not going to speak about experimental application because I have no time, just only for this reason. So, <coughs> so what is this? Uh, we have this Hamiltonian. I would like to start with Hamiltonian, not with map. Why? Because people sometimes have uh, uh, meaning that, okay, this is map, so what is the Hamiltonian? We have this Hamiltonian. I integrate between two kicks. First is free motion, free rotation. Second is kick. I can integrate in two steps exactly, without any approximation. And I can get analytical uh, description of this 2D two, uh, two map. 2D uh, in the sense that uh, we have two uh, independent variables, action and angle. So what is this? This is, we, we can see that we have two parameters. One parameter is the kick strength. Another parameter is period of the kicks. And so, and you can say that all uh, <laughs> dynamics and properties depend separately on this. No, actually not. Why? Because when you write this equation, you can see that we have this one parameter, another parameter, but we can go to new, uh, new variables in this way, and we can reduce this to the form which is known as Chirikov map. Chirikov classical map which here, this brackets, means that this periodic in, uh, uh, in uh, uh, angle 
periodic and two p p greek <laughs> prefer to not pi p greek okay so and what we have phase space of this model this is time periodic model 1d with time periodic so this we can speak that this model one and, and for one and half uh, degrees of freedom so we have phase space cylinder so then the question is what's going on in dependence on what on this parameter and initial conditions we have one scaling parameter only so but the uh, properties uh, properties of this model are extremely rich and so this model is generic model why because actually if you take any let's say any uh, time periodic uh, 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 nonlinear system uh, almost any so you can reduce for example you're interested in what happens around specific nonlinear resonance and you go to this I would say phase space locally and then you come to this expression so this is generic exp expression model to describe nonlinear resonance typical nonlinear resonance questions okay what's going on as yesterday also was shown that when k is zero we have two types of motion one is just when we have irrational value initial here so we have in time after long time the particle occupies the continuous curve okay if this is resonant some resonance so that the particle occupies only a fraction so this is periodic or periodic uh, trajectory so when we include uh, interaction or this case small so what happens with structure phase space on the place where we had we had this uh, uh, resonances so we can see appearance of nonlinear re resonances and this is this here so and this uh, resonance you can see this resonance of different uh, different harmonics okay so you can see that we have continuous curve and continuous are just k a m tori uh, kolmogorov arnold moser which states the theorem that under typical nonlinear uh, interaction so this uh, continuous curve uh, not breaks but they sm slightly change form but can uh, remain to be continuous between this continuous there is a resonance so therefore uh, the motion of the system is quasi periodic inside any resonance also here this is bounded motion here and in any case so the particle if you start here somewhere can it increase in this and this is momentum uh, the energy is bounded so that means that we have bounded uh, motion however we can have chaos where chaos is uh, close to separatrix so inside separatrix, if you start here so you can see that this is separatrix and the motion in separatrix around separatrix so always chaotic when we increase here this is increase this uh, parameter so what we can see the each of nonlinear spread increases in 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 momentum space so and so more and more uh, invariant curves disappear you can see that here still we have invariant curve and we have many resonances which increase in in uh, in size so then we increase k so you can see that chaotic uh, c chaotic region increases so this is very clear chaotic so the particle here after long time it spreads here so because it's periodic so it's occup uh, occupies some uh, some fraction of phase space however it's still bounded because it cannot go through because here we have some border which are uh, km to i finally when we have uh, when we increase k what we can see there is a transition to global chaos so what i'm saying global instability in the sense that we if we start uh, uh, the trajectory here it finds the way between different areas it finds the way to go uh, in momentum and momentum space is periodic it's periodic and momentum space so that this motion is unbounded in p direction okay and this is example of uh, mixed phase space we have uh, we have regions where we have 
quasi-periodic uh, motion, but we have also region when we have chaos. So then there is a critical value, some critical value of this order, order of one, blah, 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 blah. So when we have last invariant curve, and so then when we exceed this level, so last invariant curve that breaks, and so then we have this unbounded diffusion if we start in chaotic C. Questions? Everything's clear? I don't believe. <laughs> okay. So then what we can see, we have, can speak when we have very strong, very large uh, value of K. Let me see, I have question, no, I have no picture. But what I'm saying that if K is larger than four, larger than five, so the whole phase space is uh, uh, practical, the whole phase space is chaotic trajectory just fills the whole phase space. Of course, there are stable regions, but these stable regions, uh, area of this stable region decreases when K increases or decreases. How it decreases? We studied this long, long ago in the 70s, so that it decreases if K is a generic value, so it is exponential. If K is close to uh, accelerator mode specific, it decreases uh, uh, power. In any case, what I'm saying, that the area uh, of stable region decreases quite strongly, and so when K is large, we can forget about that. Because you never uh, find, if you don't know analytically, you never find this initial condition that corresponds to, I would say, this small stable region. And if in this case, <laughs> it's very, very, very clear we can speak about diffusion. So this is after one step, this is another step. So after n steps, this is uh, initial momentum, uh, we have this expression. This is exact one. So we can speak about uh, uh, dispersion, <laughs> okay, how this spreads, second moment. We can start with not with one particle, but also with clouds of particle, okay. And we can ask uh, about how this, I would say, packet in momentum sp space spreads in a number of kicks, this is time, number of kicks. So that you can see, this is you put here, double sum, and for large k, there is no correlation between uh, this uh, uh, angle, so one can average, so this is survive on a diagonal term, and you can see, what is this? This is diffusion. Look, we have quad quadrat, so second moment proportional to linear, this is time, time kick. So, and this uh, diffusion coefficient, diffusion coefficient. Remember, this diffusion coefficient classical one. When we go to quantum, we can speak about what is analogy of this, I would say, diffusion coefficient. And this was first found by Chirikov. Analogy is that this diffusion coefficient exactly localization length in quantum model, which is very unusual as a result. Why? Because on one side, we have completely classical concept, diffusion, okay. Another, so it is localization of in momentum space. Eigenstates are localized in momentum space. You have completely quantum uh, quantity and completely classical. And we just predicted and then followed numerically, confirmed, so by also Dimash Epiliansky. Also, he did this numeric, so he just prove that this is localization length can be measured independently of quantum version of this kick and diffusion coefficient, which we know very good accuracy. So this is first result which we just obtained analytically in kick rotor. Now let's go to this quantum uh, quantum version of kick rotor. So what, uh, how to go? It's very, very clear what to do. We have to put this Hamiltonian what we have to do is to put this head and to take this to, to go to classical, to quantum, just put this and that's all. This is quantum. We take this as an operator of a momentum, angle momentum. So therefore, this is exactly a, a quantum analog of this kick rotor. So this is a square of momentum and we have this very well-defined model. And so we started to study uh, we studied this model since, okay, with uh, Chirikov 
uh, Joe Ford and Giulio Casati. First result we obtained in 77. So that uh, uh, how we did this experiment. So we just can solve again. We can solve exactly uh, this. I would say this uh, uh, equation of motion. Okay, for quantum, but only on one period. And one between two peaks, we have rotation. Okay, we can find exact solution. And then we have kick. We can integrate kick in time. So we can go to the quantum map. Quantum map is uh, just what is this? Qu this quantum map. After one period, we have we start with any psi function. Okay, so then after one period, we have this and this unit operator. The unit operator has this form. Okay, we, we, okay, we can we can use symmetric form. Half rotation, half rotation, kick, and half rotation. Why? Because the structure of matrix which corresponds to the separator in this, I would say, symmetric form is much more clear, bent-like, and so you can see this. Questions? Hmm? Temperature? I don't know, for example, for now, right now, I don't know what is the temperature. But we can, no, 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 no. We can introduce temperature later. When the motion is chaotic, then we can introduce. But this is dynamical system without just, oh, yeah. We have isolated system. No heat bus, so you can see. We have model and kick, periodic kick. It's Hamiltonian, area preserving model, okay? Okay, so then what we can see first, we can see that we have two parameters. Control. This is kick strength, so this is period, okay? But you can see first, and it's very important, that we cannot reduce to one parameter. It's a classical model. In classical, we can reduce to one parameter, but here, no. This, this, and here they stand in different ways, so we have two parameters. So we can choose, for example, two independent parameters. One is uh, kick strength, which is inverse proportion H bar. And another one is tau, okay, with rescaled period, which is proportional to H bar. So then the product is K, classical K. So then what we study, can study. The question was, let them long, long ago, what is, if we have chaotic motion in classical representation, classical What's going on in quantum model? You go to quantum and ask what is, uh, what, uh, what, is what, uh, what are properties when we have, what are properties of quantum motion when in the classical limit we have strong chaos? So we fix strong chaos. We fix this K, classical chaos is strong, and then we speak about the situation when we have strong cl classical chaos and ask question what's going on in quantum. So then, uh, immediately you can see that we have a, a question about quantum classical correspondence for the situation when we have strong chaos. This was first, I would say, important question which was discussed by many people that uh, since that time. The main result was <laughs> immediately found numerically in numerical results 77, 78, published first in 79, so what was found? So we can iterate numerically this uh, map. This is unitary matrix, okay? We populate in momentum space, for example, one, I would say, uh, momentum, like uh, Kench dynamics, okay? We populate one uh, level, okay, in momentum, and include this uh, with interaction, which is uh, due to kicks, and then we'll sp speak about how packet spreads in momentum space in time. So because we know what's going on in classical. In classical, this packet spreads in a diffusive way, never stops, so, and so that the form of this diffusion is Gaussian, okay? So you know everything, analytical. It spreads unbounded diffusion. And we have unbounded diffusion again in momentum space. This is in classical. In quantum, okay, let's see what's going on in quantum, and that was our very strong surprise, what's going on, what, okay. 
If we plot this uh, not moment, but momentum p square, which is energy, and I plot energy normalized to k square quantum, and this is analog of the scaled uh, second moment of momentum, okay, the width of packet, okay, in momentum space versus time. Time is discrete time. What was found? Classical is diffusive here because classical is p square, okay, proportional to time, and this is diffusive, so with diffusion coefficient. We know this. What was found almost immediately when we studied numerically was found that yes, for some, uh, for some, on some time scale, we can see the correspondence between diffusion in quantum and diffusion in classical. But after short, uh, after some time, we can see that diffusion uh, saturates. We have saturation of diffusion. Packet spreads in momentum space and then saturates. So it was very, very interesting and uh, unexpected result. So what we call, we call that this quantum effect suppress diffusion in, uh, in momentum space. Later it was just, uh, uh, it is just exactly dynamical localization in momentum space. So again, we start with packet, include uh, there's, uh, this uh, let's say interaction between us and the spreads and then saturates. Now, later, 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 so it is understood that this is, you can have in mind analogy with others localization. You have one D model, you ex uh, initially take one packet, and so you see what happens with dynamics. So when this packet spreads, 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 in ballistic way, because it's 1D, not a diffusion. But it spreads, and after some time, it saturates. And this is, what is this? It is Anderson localization, yes? Okay, so what we observed, we didn't know that this can be related with Anderson way. We found that this, uh, this uh, uh, behavior. Now, now there are <coughs> very important questions. What are time scale? We know from the theorem of Ehrenfest theorem, not in first time, we know uh, that there is an first, I would say, okay, an first theorem which states that if <coughs> we start with quantum packet in, in phase space, so this, the center of this quantum packet goes along trajectory, classical trajectory, for some time. That's all. Just this was established. Uh, rigorous theorem, you can find this, it's quite simple theorem, you can find it in, I would say, in internet, proof of this, so that for some time, for some time, there was not even question, not discussed, what is this time, so for some time, uh, the wave center of wave packet follows classical trajectory. What happens after, it was not known. Now, what we can see, questions? So then, uh, this, uh, 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 yeah. uh, this was question, what, hap what is time for this correspondence? But we have to be careful why, because uh, Ernst first spoke about uh, spread of packet, uh, motion packet in phase space. Okay, in phase space, yes, <coughs> this is, uh, was shown analytically by, in papers by, uh, in papers by uh, uh, Berman Zaslavsky, yeah, it is not here, uh, analytically, that packet spreads, packet spreads exponentially. It's not uh, just easy, I would say, result. Uh, you can write a semi-classical form, a semi-classical exact uh, uh, equation, uh, form for, uh, for packet, and then you have to analyze what's going on with this packet. If uh, in the classical limit we have strong classic, uh, chaos. So it was found that indeed the packet spreads, and this packet spreads uh, exponentially fast, exponentially fast, and it spreads exponentially fast up to some time. And this time is due to what? Due to boundary. Because it spreads in kick rotor, for example, it spreads, and we have boundary in theta space. So we have packet, and so then it spreads very fast exponentially, and when it goes to, it reaches the boundary to P, okay, so then this, this spreads finished. 
So that after this time scale, we cannot speak about any correspondence, of, no, not any, but about correspondence between quantum and classical motion. Okay, we knew this, so that, okay, there is a time scale, time scale after which we should not expect correspondence between, uh, between quantum and classical. But then what was found, that if we increase k, but fine, okay, we have for some time, which is much longer than the NFS time of okay, this, we have very good correspondence for diffusion. So the packet spreads in, uh, in the diffusive way in moment of space, and it spreads for a long time, which is much larger than this NFS time, in correspondence with classical. You can see this is very important because sometimes people say that NFS time is only one scale and that's all. No, there are different scales. So what I'm saying, quantum correspondence between classical and quantum depends on the quantity. If we speak about spread and phase space, this is one story and this is NFS time. But if we speak about observable second moment or another moment and so on, then it was shown rigorously analytically by papers by Sam Hafiz and Sokolov, and also by Dimash Pryaski, there's two different models. One is kick rotor, uh, another one is kick nonlinear oscillator. It was shown analytically. What it is very, very interesting, very difficult, I would say, proof that in this semi-classical packet, which is infinite sum, there are the terms which increase exponentially fast, each term. But one can reshuffle all terms, and to see that uh, uh, and on some time scale, many, uh, I will say, this term kills each other. And so then uh, quantum classical correspondence for moments of this is so hard. So it lasts much, much longer. So we have, we can see that there is a time scale, and we call this diffusion time scale, which is very different. And the first time is a very small time. And kick, in kick rotor, this is about 10 kicks. After 10 kicks, so then there is no the packet spreads in 2p and this so. So this is a very small time scale. But what I'm saying, if we ask not about phase space and uh, psi function phase space, so then we can uh, see that uh, the diffu uh, second moment of packet follows to classical prediction, diffusive, for very, very long time, which is h so, so. We have two time scales, okay? This is very important results. Okay, then later there were some analytical results, uh, mainly analytical results. What is it? First, it was shown that there is a localization related to classical. Then, analytical was for, found that for specific values of periods, rescaled periods, which is rational with respect to 4p, 4 pi, okay, if it is rational, so we have completely different motion. So, for Sometime it could show the same, but when time goes to infinite, we can see that the spread second moment increases quadratically in time. Not linearly, but quadratically. What is quadratical? Quadratical is uh, just uh, uh, like free motion, okay? So what I'm saying? So there is no saturation, there is no dynamical localization. For this, I would say, specific values for quantum results, it was proved that uh, rigorously by, in papers, uh, by Dimash and myself, okay, so this was 79, okay, it was proved, it's not easy proof, so uh, uh, that uh, for any resonance, not for basic resonance, for basic resonance, more, uh, it's more or less clear than we have a scale period 2p or 4p, it's very clear to get results, but for any resonance, which is 4p, R over Q, where R and Q are integers. So it was shown that time when goes so, what we have, we have uh, in time, you have ballistic spread, which is completely different behavior than in classical. So therefore, for quantum resonance, we have no quantum correspondence, classical correspondence at all. So for irrational values, we have quantum classical correspondence for diffusion. Okay, for large time, so we have saturation, we have dynamic localization, but we have no dynamic localization for this specific levels. Okay, so then uh, analytic results and numerical results have been obtained in this, I would say, paper, first paper. This is about kick, about 
quantum resonances, then there is a big I would say, review paper where we discussed what's going on here. Uh, so this is also, and also paper by Fishman, also other people, where they found that if we reduce this, make some transformation of this model, one can transform this model to 1D model, but with long range interaction. And so then it shows that we can, we may speak about correspondence to Anderson localization, but of course not, because Anderson localization, it is in random potential. Here the deterministic potential first. Second, we can see that for specific values we have no localization. So what I'm saying, this is uh, this analog is not proof, it's just only uh, some kind of relevance of this. Okay, so that many results about kick rotors so can be found in my paper, every paper, so on. Okay, and so that <laughs> Chirico was very skillful just to get analytical results, just using very, very simple, I would say, but very clever, very deep, I would say, uh, scaling, uh, I would say, suggestion properties. And it is exactly this result that uh, diff localization lengths in moment of space and quantum is proportional to qu classical diffusion was obtained in just uh, this size of paper. So, okay, so this is only a few. So this is very interesting uh, how to do this. So as we discussed a long time ago, so it was not easy, but this uh, picture is from Lesus Conference School, from Lesus School, so how <laughs> Chirikov can get, <laughs> can show, can prove that P, P is one over E. Okay. okay, now, now, now let's go to, uh, let's see what is here, uh, sorry, yes, yeah, this is I told already, okay, now let's go to second part of first part, okay. So now question, okay. Now I go very, very important, I go from one body curves to many body curves. What is many body curves? It's very important that in this situation, we, it's much easier, uh, much uh, very, very effective to start. We have single particle states, and we have, for example, Fermi particles. So we have, for example, four particles. And we put these four particles on single particles. So for example, ground state is this, okay? And also another combination like this, 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 okay, here, this and that. So from this single particle representation, we can go to many body representation. So this state is many body, corresponds to ground state, then another combination, so on. We go to many body uh, levels. This is eig uh, eig uh, energy corresponds to a uh, specific occupation. So like in uh, nuclear physics, so this could be shell model and we go to many body representation. So, the, so if we start, and I would like to speak about this specific, I would say, presentation. If we start with this, uh, uh, with the situation when we have no interaction between particles. Okay, so we can, uh, we know everything in experimental, for example, uh, shell model uh, in uh, nuclear physics. We know all this, I would say, energies, and we can create this energy uh, for unpaired, for non-interacted particles. Then we include interaction, which is typically has finite width, and so this is okay, called V, and so then happen, our question is what happens in present many body representation. What I'm saying, we can start with single particle representation, to go to many body representation, to study properties of spectrum and eigen, eigenstates and uh, many body representation, to speak about chaotic eigenstates in this representation. Then we know we can get results. And then we go to a single particle representation, we can speak about properties of any operator, single particle operator. This tool is very, I would say, important and very effective was developed uh, uh, since, I don't know, last millennium, okay, so, and uh, one model which is very effective of this, uh, let's say, approach is so-called, uh, okay, I can go with this uh, 
these papers, which are important in this, I would say, study by Deutsch, Sedinsky, Van Baum, myself. So we use the model, which is model of so-called uh, two-body interaction model, which is analog of uh, uh, analog of Wigner band random matrix, but much more close to reality. So what is uh, uh, what is the model Wigner Wigner band random matrix? So what is this? This Hamiltonian can be written in two parts, H0 plus V, and H0 is diagonal. Okay, this corresponds to this. So it is diagonal matrix, okay, which corresponds to unperturbed or non-interacting particles, and this is exactly what I call this band-like matrix. So this model was a random model. by was introduced by Wigner in 54-55, before full random matrices. Before full random matrices, he also invented full So he did it with this model. Why? Because it's physical. So you have non interacting particle in the application to nuclear physics. Everything was done in application to nuclear physics, so what I'm saying. So you start with non interacting I would say, uh, particles in heavy nuclear. Then you include interaction. And so does you have this correspondence between, I would say, unperturbed and so on. If we go modify this model much more close to physics, it is known as a two-body interaction model, like here. Sorry? Okay. No? Right. So this is stands for non-interacting particles. Epsilon k is just energy of single particle state. Okay? We have single particle states. And we have m uh, particles. We have m particles distributed in single particle states. Okay? So this is creation operation operator. So this stands for non-interacting particles in many body representation. Because the size of the matrix is a single particle, but the size of the matrix is very, very large. So then we go you know, for finite. 10 particles, so it's very huge matrix and many body representation. Now, we include interaction. And for simplicity in this model, this interaction is assumed to be completely random. But completely random, not here in this matrix, but completely random physically. We have what we have. We have two body interaction. We have one particle, another particle, sitting at one level, another level, they interact, and then these two particles go to different levels. Okay, so, so this is matrix elements. This is matrix elements between this, I would say, Q, Q. So this is two. So uh, interaction with matrix elements, single particle matrix elements. So, so we assume that each of these terms, single particle, are Gaussian variables with fixed, I would say, variance, and so that's all. We assume this is as random as possible, but taking into account the interaction is two-body. We have only two-body. Of course, in nuclear physics, there are some cases when there is three-body, but it's exceptional. I don't like this to discuss it. Questions? Hmm? Yes. This is, yes, only here, this, that's all. In single particle matrix elements, we have randomness. But if we speak about this matrix in many body representation, it's not completely random. It's bent like first. And second, there are many zeros in this. It was a matrix. Why? Because, for example, for Fermi particles, so for example, uh, we have uh, two body interaction. Okay, and we can move this particle and this particle. No, we can move only two. But we cannot move three particles here to here because this is three body. So therefore, we, can, we have only two body. So therefore, we cannot create from ground state uh, to go to highest level in single particle by moving all particles. We can move only two particles. So therefore, we have bent-like structure. And this is typical representation of such matrix. 
you can see this matrix has bent like because here what I told there is no matrix elements at all so so this is zero matrix and so we can see also what is passed so this is you can compare with full random matrix but you have to be careful first that it's not full random there is a finite bent why because finite energy if system is completely isolated interaction is finite always so interaction gives the uh, I would say the uh, area in which everything happens so it, it cannot be infinite so so what I'm saying that this is very important to take into account that we have bended or it's a bent like matrices now we develop now the problem yeah or quasi particles or quasi particles quasi quasi particles also uh, this is very good question yeah it's not general in one sense general in the sense that there are many situation when we can speak about this for example nuclear there is a shell model non directing of nucleus and so then we interact so this and we can include they did this for uh, Inske, so and his uh, what's a group they took this they constructed matrix due to experiments so they took just experimental results for matrix elements so what I'm saying that it works quite well for many systems but the problem is exactly the what is mean field because h0 is mean field people work this so they choose mean field which uh, when mean field describes a relatively simple motion you can introduce or you can introduce a particular quasi part modes for example you go to mode representation so and in nuclear physics they call that if they what they cannot embed in this simple I would say levels a single uh, uh, modes this is residual interaction and then assume that residual interaction has no I would say integrals or no correlation Uh, this is good of course uh, yeah of course of course if it is degenerate so there is a much more complicated uh, result but uh, first one try to understand what's going on if one we have not yes yes yeah correct mid field is known that it is not well defined you can use this field and see what happens whether it corresponds and so no this is not good this is what happens also in nuclear physics they choose for example that uh, they fixed I would say some quantum numbers spin 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 interaction so on and they create this so but typically it works quite well in nuclear physics the shell model so this is quite good and also we apply this, uh, to solid state field with uh, with spin atom and we use this what we did okay I, I can see what we did uh, for example some paper which we did I did this with Berman so we took one mean field found something okay and we saw that uh, something is not clear one can try to do so then we embed this in other term this is state of art but if we suggest that we can do the question is what's going on yes question yeah it is uh, uh, symmetry is embedded here because we we used we used symmetry for both particles of Fermi particle explicitly symmetry in many matrix elements after that we use this we take into account symmetry explicitly yes that eigenstate should symmetrize or non symmetrize you or the Fermi particle so what I'm saying we above this above this not completely random but we use this okay, we take into account this that it was what 
Yo okay, creo, ya. Ya. Uh -huh. Ya. Yeah. No, you have to take account any additional symmetry. You have to take into account any additional symmetry. But what I'm saying, this model, uh, when we have no any, I would say, additional symmetries, that uh, we assume that we already uh, selected, uh, I would say, uh, the. Uh, Yes, so that's what I'm saying. I can tell you what we know for uh, lieb linear model. lieb linear model, which is completely integrable, and we studied exactly in this approach. But I would like first to describe approach. Approach, as you know, only energy. Number of particles, yes, of course, yeah. Number of particles and energy, yes, yeah, yeah, that's true, yeah. yeah okay, because, yes, yes, yeah, because in S, Y, K model, number of particles is not concerned, and this is different because people, sometimes they call this and this field that this corresponds to foreign matters. Come on, foreign matters, they assume that number of particles, number of particles here, two body random matter, you know, constant, and this, uh, uh, this difference sometimes missed in literature, I can say. This is an interesting question. Okay, uh, first, uh, why this model is good? Because, you know, you can simplify the model as soon as possible, however, to have a model which gives very important, I would say, consider results. And so this model was invented long, long ago by 80, 81, so a group of Mexican fish and American fish also, so it is well-known model. The original <laughs> question for this model was, okay, take full random matrix. What is density? So semicircle, no, semicircle is not physical. So, uh, so what to do somehow, just how to modify this to, uh, to, gi to have model more close to this? So it was suggested that we can introduce the model with k ring interaction between two body, three body interaction, so on, so on. When we have uh, n-body interaction, this is full random matrix. When we have two, three, and so this is not a completely random matrix, I would say. So these models were uh, invented long, long ago. I don't, uh, so I don't say something very new. What is new is approach how to solve uh, this, I would say, dynamics and properties of this model. To solve this, we have to just to, uh, first to discuss basic relations, okay. So we have this H0 stands for non-interactional particles, quasi-particles, interaction, so what we have? We have unperturbed basis and perturbed basis. So eigenstates alpha can be represented in unperturbed basis like this, K is unperturbed and this is, I would say, total. Or vice versa, we can project, we, alpha is specific eigenstates of total Hamiltonian. Total. No, <laughs> quantum number, come on. It depends what you mean by quantum number. If any, any eigen, uh, eigenvalue of any matrix, you can t uh, treat as a quantum number. Okay, I don't mind, but it uh, doesn't give anything new. What I'm saying, you have Hamiltonian. You diagonalize. When you diagonalize, you have to choose the basis in which you uh, eigenstates are presented, basis in which, and this basis is defined by this H0. So then uh, that matrix that I show, I diagonalize in this matrix. So then I take eigenstates alpha and project on unperturbed basis. So this is uh, components uh, alpha and K, which is eigenstate presented in the basis. Okay. I can do this just uh, opposite. I can take unperturbed state and project to exact eigenstate. Why not? So, and this is exactly what I'm saying. Unperturbed many body states to perturbed to exact eigenstate. So you can see that this is the same 
I would say, uh, components. So at these components, I can create a matrix. If I know this matrix, okay, so I know all eigenstates in both representation, okay? So then, this is definition of unperturbed energy, and this definition of uh, total Hamiltonian perturbance. Now, now we can construct from this expression, we can construct very, very important functions, two functions. First is this function is nothing else as an eigenstate in unperturbed basis, but projected to energy space, because each uh, level corresponds to specific energy. I can present eigenstate not only in basis, but I can state in energy, unperturbed energy. So what I'm saying with due density, this is uh, this is eigenstate with fixed energy and presented in unperturbed basis. Look what you can see. This is square of this, I would say, coefficient. This is exactly the quantity when we can speak about chaos. Because we can define chaos in terms of structure of eigenstates. We have eigenstates. If this eigenstate can composed by many, many unperturbed levels, okay, uh, components, and if there is no correlation between all these components, so it is uh, matrix, so we can speak about this like chaotic eigenstate. In nuclear physics, the number of components in uh, I excited eigenstate, 10 to 5. 10 to 5, 10 to 4. In atomic physics, in 10 to 3, and so on, like that. So what I'm saying is large. Even uh, Chiriker did this uh, uh, work, uh, 85. He took experimental data for cerium atom. Cerium atom is only four electrons in outer shell. Four electrons, OK? And he used this uh, numerical data, uh, not numerical, experimental data. And again, he was so skillful to take this experimental data and to claim that eigenstates are chaotic eigenstates consist about 120 components in unperturbed basis. It was long ago. So again, we can introduce, we can define chaos not through spectrum. And why it is uh, not good for many bodies? Uh, 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 for one body, yeah. For one body, uh, chaos, it is well known that one can speak about chaos if it is Wigner-Dyson, and this is not chaotic. If it is Poisson, it's non-chaotic. Correct, good. And you can measure in one body case. When you have many body systems, to measure uh, spectrum of many body and to take some information is not easy. But even more principle, okay, you can speak about the whole spectrum. You can speak about uh, properties of correlation, fluctuation, level spacing, and so on. But it's not enough. Why? Because you speak, you have like the whole spectrum and properties of the whole spectrum. But when you ask about dynamics, you excite specific uh, packet. Then everything depends how many eigenstates, how many eigenvalues this packet consists of. Because you excite only a fraction of spectrum in dynamics. And so you cannot use, I would say, uh, uh, level spacing statistics when you search, I would say, uh, dynamics, apart from full random matrix. For full random matrix, okay, you take any initial packet and it falls all eigenstates. Okay, good. But if in physics, so when you take a uh, final let's say, packet, so the question is how many unperturbed frequencies are in this packet? It can be much less than, the, I would say, the whole spectrum. So what I'm saying, spectrum properties are not so important as structure of eigenstates. Therefore, we can define chaos, quantum chaos, in terms of chaotic structure of eigenstates. Questions? Because here I had many questions. How you define quantum uh, randomness so on? OK, I can show you. OK, later. So another quantity is strength function or L loss in solid state physics, or uh, uh, strength function in nuclear physics. What is this? It was first initial it was a nuclear physics due to Wigner and so on. What you have, uh, you have many body spectrum. You have complex nuclear. 
you excite one level, excited level. You excite this, then due to interaction, each level had coupling to other levels. This packet spreads in energy space due to interaction between particles. So the question is, what is the width in energy for which your initial packet can spread? Understand? So you excite initial again, initial state unperturbed, then this initial state spreads over all. It's just standard, I would say, physics. So you excite some unperturbed level, and then due to interaction, it spreads in energy space. So, and then this, func this function gives this, I would say, describe this, uh, this uh, I would say, spread. Because what is this? This again, projection of uh, projection of unperturbed states, uh, specific one unperturbed state, in exact eigenstate. And gives you just spread. So, and this spread is given by this function. By the way, it is also important why? Because this is exact, exact definition. If you take Fourier transform of this function, this exact uh, the probability to be in initial state, staying probability, okay? Or, how to say, staying probability, or, uh, yes, to discuss. So, uh, it is exactly how energy gives this, Fourier transform of this function, gives you <coughs> exactly how energy, how uh, probability in initial excited state decreases in time. So if this is Lorentz, so then we have exponential decay. Okay, this exponential decay. So if it is Gaussian, so we have that. Way. No, manip what? This. This. Yeah, she is just the components of eigen. Yes. What are specific properties? If we search, I can show you. Okay, good question. So I have, okay, okay, okay. Uh, no, not here. So what I'm saying that, okay, I can use this. Okay, there are many interesting questions, of course. Ah, okay, good, this question. So look, this is exactly that model, okay? So we diagonalize this model, okay? And so then this is uh, 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 energy, uh, small energy, and this representation eigenstate in unperturbed basis for energy. So you can see this. It is localized because it spreads very so. Then this is weak interaction here. And you can uh, see or this, uh, so they, uh, they have only few components here. When we take strong interaction, you can see that eigenstate in unperturbed basis is this, this specific eigenstate. So you can see there are many components. So this is actual matrix is 4,000, 4,000 components here. So you can see there is a spread in finite space, you know, spread here. And so, I can search this, I would say, eigenstate, and I search whether there are correlations between components. And typically, in this situation, there is no correlations. But also, I can say, speak about envelope. So what I'm saying, I can define chaotic eigenstate like this, that I can introduce envelope and search fluctuations around this envelope. And we did this for specific of a model. And so if fluctuations about average level, I would say mid-level, so a Gaussian, okay, this is good definition for chaotic eigenstate. Yeah. No, statement, because you never, you never can say that there are no any correlations. We check for properties. Huh? No, it's broken.
Sem Saratoga, não. Yeah. Yeah, uh, ok. Mas a Carolina de Ortega da Ganela, but if you have 10 to 5 components, so the Ganela, you can just forget about it. It is Gaussian, even, of course, it is not Gaussian exactly for finite. But it is very, very close to this. Yeah, I check this. Five, 50 it is okay. 50 components and Gaussian and non Gaussian exactly correspond. Yes? Yeah. Okay, yes, that's true. Very about that. Yeah, but oh, this is one body curves. And what the body curves you can take into account this. Okay, this is a good question. Okay, I give it once and the finish. I Look, again, uh, you speak about one body case and the influence of scars, influence of scars for structure against it. Correct. I speak in many body curves. For many body curves, can you search uh, two uh, uh, many bodies, uh, phase space, which correspond to 10 particles? Can you search this exponential, exponential large phase space? No, you can do nothing. Forget about scars and many body physics. No, maybe some specific case. But you are right, and you are right that always one can speak, oh, there are correlations. Even we did some, so very, very, very tiny correlations, but they are not generic, I would say. And they are not important for observables, what I'm saying. We know, we even published paper 96, where we found that there are correlations between chaotic eigens in this model in this model, due to what? Due to interesting, there are tails. Tails, not chaotic. Chaos is in the core of eigenstate. In the core, we have no correlation, but in tails, we have correlations. So, because they are small, so, so, so the question is what, whether it is important or not. We found some specific observable for which it is important, specifically. For what is more important? No, in one body curves, uh, yes. Uh -huh. No, you know when when you s yeah. When you say about high energy of st uh, high energy of states, high high density of states, so uh, I don't understand what is, what does it mean because uh, for the whole for the whole Hamiltonian. Oh, I okay, yeah, yeah, correct, correct. Yeah, I understand. Okay, I can tell you what the case. So in this approach, the question was when eigenstates are chaotic, and then. The result is clear, which corresponds to what you say, that if we in the low, level, low part of the spectrum density is not uh, very high, so eigenstates as, as here. Oh, it's, it's exactly this. So what is this? Here this is low density, here. This low density, but this is high density. That's correct, yeah. But the question is not say this. The question is, the question is, I give Hamiltonian. It, it depends on one, two, three, four parameters. Can you tell me when eigenstates are chaotic, when not? This is what we are doing. This is what... Yeah, all the 
It's good to have discussion. It's good to have discussion. Any other questions? We can, yeah, but but we can discuss. Uh, yeah, coffee break. <laughs> okay. okay.